and I'm trying to figure out how to make this balloon rocket. Hey, Kathy, what's that? Hi, can you help me? Okay. Okay, I'm going to take this straw and I'll put a thread through it. We need to tape it to the rocket. And now with a double-sided tape, we're going to stick the balloon to the rocket. We need to tie the threads to the ends of the room. And now we're ready for blast off. Three, two, one, go! Whoa, cool, it really works. You know, real rockets work on the same principle of action and reaction. The air inside the balloon is squashed into a small space, so it's at a very high pressure. When you let go of the balloon, air rushes out of the neck and propels the balloon in the opposite direction. In a real rocket, hot gases rush out of the boosters and propel it into the air. On today's episode of Science May Twist, we're going to take you out of this world, into space. Kyati and Avik explore what it's like to live in space. They then head off to the Indian Space Research Organization to find out more on Chandrayaan-1 and what it takes to put a craft in space. They also visit the National Aerospace Laboratory to see what goes behind putting together a working spacecraft. We're going to see how life would be like in outer space. The shuru kare? Oh, this pen, na. it isn't even writing. So, just take another one. What I really need is one of those cool pens that astronauts use. They can write on anything and in zero gravity. Imagine. You can write upside down. Ha ha, but you know how much NASA spent to develop that pen? How much? One million dollars. Whoa. Do you know what the funny thing is? What? The Russians just use a pencil instead. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they had to figure all of this out because of microgravity in space. Earth's gravity just doesn't work. So everything goes topsy-turvy. Just imagine the Earth without gravity. Everything would be floating around. The houses, the people, the trees, everything. If the Earth's gravity were ever turned off, it's not just furniture and people that would start floating. Two important things held on the ground by gravity are the atmosphere and the water in the oceans, lakes and rivers. Without gravity, the air in the atmosphere would be sucked into space, which means the end of life as we know it. I would love to go to a spaceship and experience weightlessness. Wouldn't it be fun? Floating. It's not as fun as it looks. Do you know it causes nausea and dizziness? Your head swells up and over a long period of time, your muscles become weak and your bones become brittle. So much for fun. Everything in the shuttle that is not secured floats. So if you have long hair, it floats around your face. To move in microgravity, you have to push against something so that it pushes against you in the opposite direction, helping you move. Everything is carried on board. Even the water is recycled from water vapor, the astronaut's breath, the fuel cells and even from the bathroom. Okay, maybe staying in space isn't as easy as Star Trek makes it look. But I'd still like to try it out. Actually, you can. Really? Do you have 20 million dollars? 20 million dollars? Ah, chutke. That's how much a one-week vacation in space would cost. Whoa! Space tourism is taking off in a big way and it's estimated to become a multi-billion dollar industry in a few years. American businessman Dennis Tito was the world's first space tourist in 2001. Tito flew into space aboard a Russian rocket. Several space tourists have followed Tito and several companies have started building sub-orbital vehicles. Some are even planning orbital cities that will house tourists in space. I should abandon my plans of going into space. 
Or I could start saving up. Or win a lottery. Boss Bucky, he wants to go to space too. He won't be the first animal to go into space. Did you know that the first animals in space were fruit flies and corn seeds in 1947? But the most famous animal in space was Laika, the Russian dog. She was also the first mammal to orbit way back in 1957, even before humans went into space. Other animals that have been to space include monkeys, cats, rats, frogs and tortoises. Space has always fascinated us. Ever since we looked up into the expanse of the night sky and started spotting constellations, we wondered, what lies beyond? Ancient Indian astronomers like Aryabhat and Bhaskar opened many mysteries of the night sky to us. Wanting to push the boundaries of this knowledge led to the invention of the telescope. We understood our planet, our solar system, our galaxy and wondered, what lies beyond? And so began our space age, from the launch of early satellites in the 1950s to the prospect of living in space today, we really have come a long way. Afik, hey guess what I have in my hands? What are these? They look like e-tickets. They're not just any tickets, they're going to take us to a cool place where we can explore the big mad world of space science. We don't need these. I've just invented this really cool teleporter that'll zap us anywhere we want to go. Zap us? Yep. Anywhere? Yeah, be serious, nah. Watch out, Khyati. This is an Avik style gag. What if it short circuits? It won't, yeah, chill. Hey, where are we going? Where on earth have Khyati and Avik vanished? Will they get a chance to see how space missions are put together up close? Wait and watch to find out. And stay tuned to catch the fun question of the day on space. Whoa, my zapper works! It actually works! You know that didn't really happen, right? It was just a video effect. Where are we? Huh? Are we at? ISRO. We're at ISRO. We're at the Indian Space Research Organization. All India space research is done here. Like NASA for America. But we also made India's first moon mission here. Chandrayaan 1. Chandrayaan 1 is an unmanned lunar spacecraft and it revolves around the moon. It takes about two years to complete its mission. Did you know India is only the fourth country to plant its flag on the moon? Welcome to the Indian Space Research Organization, Satish Dhawan Space Center. Today is the day... Chandrayaan-1 is the first spacecraft that India has launched outside the Earth's orbit. A huge leap for our space program. So what equipment does the spacecraft have? The lunar mission has two main sections. A lunar orbiter or a satellite that orbits the moon and an impactor that landed on the moon. The mission was launched on 22nd October 2008 and entered lunar orbit on 8th November 2008. This entire mission has been carried out at the fraction of the amount it normally costs, about 386 crore rupees. That's the cost of an average Hollywood movie. So what's its mission? Well, Chandrayaan's mission is to enhance our knowledge about the moon by taking 3D photographs of its surface. The scientists are using the information from the photographs to prepare a map of the moon, showing the different geological areas as well as the mineral deposits in the moon's surface. On 29th August 2009, India lost contact with the Chandrayaan-1. Though this was before the finish date, ISRO scientists say that 95% of the project objectives have already been completed. However, Chandrayaan-1 was alive and well when Avik and Khyati visited ISRO. Come in, Chandrayaan-1. This is mission control here. All systems normal, all systems normal. We are good to go. Good. Stand by for takeoff. Three, two, one. Launch! 
कितना मजा आ रहा है। I can't believe it. We're actually at the space control center. This is where all the action takes place and where Chandrayaan one is controlled. That's right. After the Chandrayaan one was launched, all its complex maneuvers were controlled from this room at Istrac, Istra's telemetric tracking and command network center in Bengaluru. It is from here that they monitor the historic moment when the moon impact probe separated from Chandrayaan 1 and landed on the moon on November 14, 2008 at 8:31 Indian Standard Time. Scientists here can also instruct Chandrayaan 1 to perform various tasks. They can calculate its orbit and predict its future course. How does Chandrayaan 1 communicate with the people here? Well, it doesn't speak English or any other language. Well, it may not speak English or Hindi, but Chandrayaan One communicates in binary code using the systems of ones and zeros. This information is translated into words and images by huge computers at the space control centers. And we're off to see the key link in this communication process. It's huge and it's round. Any guesses? This enormous antenna you see behind me. has a diameter of 32 meters it has been put up specifically here to get information from chandrayaan 1 it's so huge because it's receiving so much data from such a vast distance attack now these enormous antennae send commands receive data and track chandrayaan 1 The information travels a whopping 4 lakh kilometers to reach the earth and by the time these radio waves get here they are incredibly weak which is why huge dish antennae are needed to detect the waves and extract the useful information The Chandrayaan 1 revolves around the moon 14 times and that antenna tracks it when it's in the line of sight guess what it's tracking it now Here's an interesting fact. The antenna can receive signal only when the spacecraft is in the line of sight. Hence, they need to continuously compensate for the earth's rotation. With all this cutting-edge technology available, we're wondering if we can get our own images from the Chandrayaan. How? Kaise? Kaise? Well, we're going to be meeting somebody really interesting. Wo shayad hamari madad kar paaye. Chalo, let's go. I am going to meet Dr. Shiv Kumar, one of the scientists who works really closely on the Chandrayaan One mission. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. How are you? So, how are you, Kathy? Okay. How are you, Avik? Very nice. So, what do you want to know? What crater is that? That's images which we get from moon surface from Chandrayaan Live. As the satellite moves over the moon surface, it takes picture. This is 100 kilometers above the moon surface, okay. and we get 5 meter resolution. Three cameras are there on the satellite, which provide this data day in and day out. Cool. These pictures are so cool. Can I get one? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I get my own picture of the moon from a satellite. And Kathy, you also deserve one. One for me too. So what have we learned from Chandrayaan One? It has sent more than seventy thousand breathtaking images, like the one Avik and Kathy got of the lunar surface. Some from the permanently shadowed areas, like craters. It's managed to collect massive data pertaining to the chemical and mineral content of the moon. It also conducted experiments to solve some of the mysteries of the moon, like whether there is ice in the crater at the north pole of the moon. And all this will come together to create the first ever detailed map of the moon. India has just started thinking about training programs for astronauts. So all you budding astronauts out there will have to wait a couple of years till manned missions start. A lot of Indians have travelled out to space, but nobody is as famous as Kalpana Chawla. Kalpana Chawla was the first Indian American astronaut to fly the U.S. space shuttle. She was also the first Indian woman and only the second person of Indian origin to fly in space. In 2003, she was part of the ill-fated Columbia mission. Tragically, while returning to Earth, the space shuttle shattered in midair on 1st February 2003, just minutes before it was ready to touch down. There were no survivors, but Kalpana Chawla has inspired a whole generation of astro enthusiasts. <laughs> 